Okay, so um, this video is going to cover the uh, group two um, topic within the unit two specification. It's going to go through the various bits that need it. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on atomic radius, really, uh, look at the trends in ionization energy, or really um, sort of the melting point, purely because uh, those things are kind of covered in unit one. Um, although you need to know them for unit two, uh, really they are the their unit uh, unit one um, uh, topics, really. So I'm going to leave those out and just kind of touch on what is sort of fresh content, if you like. Um, so group two, first of all, uh, what is group two? Well, it's uh, group two of the periodic table, uh, also known as the alkaline earth metals. Um, so the alkaline earth metals group two, um, obviously lying in that second column on the periodic table. A few things you need to know about these things. I mean, first of all, they all form ions with a... Um, if they're all they're all metals for a start, the metal ions always have a, a two plus charge. So, for example, uh, magnesium two plus, um, barium two plus, etc., etc. So we've got those um, those ions being made. There's a there's a few points really that kind of it, it looks at, but it's it's relatively straightforward actually. The um, the whole of this topic and it's it's very very small actually and. One that I think people sometimes get themselves a bit too worked over, worked up over. Um, it's there's not a lot of scope for questions being asked. Um, so first of all, what? How do they react? Well, they react with water. So react with H2O, and they all react in a very very similar way. And if we just use again this uh, this generic M to represent any of the of the metals, they react as in ionic terms. They react M, um, and they go get rid of this and they become the M two plus ion. Add two electrons, balance that up at that half equation as this. They're forming this M two plus ion over here. And if we look at oxidation state terms we can see we go from zero to plus two. Therefore there is an oxidation in occurring in this uh in this situation. So we've got oxidation. So they are oxidized when they react, they lose electrons. Example, I'll give you an actual sort of uh, a proper one here. Ca goes to Ca2 plus plus two electrons. So a reasonably sort of straightforward thing. Just substituting in our elements, our group two elements for uh, the letter M here, uh, which makes it quite easy. The actual, going to a bit more sort of detail actually about the reaction with water. So that's their, the way they react is like this, but the actual reaction with water more specifically is um, that our metal again, using this M, it reacts with uh, the water to form specifically the uh, the hydroxide, and that's a very very important thing. So we'll use this again, generic M, um, and we'll go across here and forming hydrogen there. So M plus w uh, water gives us MOH2 plus H2. And all you have to do is substitute in the M for the element that we're dealing with. So we'll do mag uh, magnesium for example. So the magnesium. Um, we will react that with the water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. And of course, must remember to balance things. We have obviously have balance there um, to make sure obviously our hydrogens and our oxygens are balanced. The one key thing here, this is, if we use um, state symbols here, we would see that this is the reaction of magnesium with water. Magnesium is a bit of a special case in that it will react with steam slightly differently. And so magnesium reacting with steam, again still H2O, but in, in, a, in a gaseous state, actually forms the oxide um, and then still H2. So that's a point to really be aware of is that you could be asked either of those and it's just it's just a very small thing but again that might get you another mark two marks in the exam um or probably mark actually uh but it's still that's that's, that's a mark that you know could be the difference between sort of um an a and a b c and a d or whatever um so point there to note reactions with water reasonably straightforward if we look actually at these reactions as well um, and i will touch now very very quickly on the reactivity if we go down um group two so starting at the top with uh, beryllium, um, going down to uh, barium, we'll find that, generally speaking, the reaction um, it increases. So the reactivity increases. 
Uh, and if you think about this, um, in, in terms of the reason why that happens, well, as we go down, it becomes increasingly easy to oxidise our, our atom into the ion. Uh, and that's really what's happening here. We're going from atom to um, ion here. So magnesium, for example, going from magnesium atom to magnesium ion within the magnesium hydroxide. And so because as we go down the group, the um, atom gets bigger, those outer shell electrons are further away. And so removing them becomes easier because there's more shielding and there's uh, less, therefore less attraction to the nucleus. It's further away and more shielding. Easier to remove them, therefore more reactive. And it's the same reason for the group 1 metals to go down. That's a very obvious one we see. And actually you can see this kind of thing in class. If you take something like um, calcium, certainly. Calcium with water, it's quite a vigorous reaction actually. It's, 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 um, it gets very hot. Um, magnesium is, is slower but still occurs. And obviously going down towards barium, it's a very, very rapid, um, very rapid reaction um, indeed. Um, so this is a bit about the reaction with water. Take into account here this um, special case of magnesium reacting with um, the steam. A bit disjointed here. Brilliant, no reaction. Okay, I should really mention that, but I think in the exam I can't imagine them give, asking you to write the equation for a brilliant reacting with water and it being a trick to say oh there is no reaction normally they'll specify oh uh, write the equation for magnesium with water magnesium with steam barium with water etc or maybe write the ionic equation in which case you would just be dealing with this guy here um, okay going down looking a bit at the next section which is in group two which is the solubility of the compounds this sort of plays itself into um, the solubility of two specific compounds. Look at the solubility of the hydroxides, and we look at the solubility of the sulfate. And the easiest way to do this is think about it um, going down the group. So going down um, the hydroxide versus the sulfate. So this is going to be least soluble going to most soluble. This is going to be the complete opposite. Most soluble to least soluble. So for example, uh, magnesium hydroxide uh, is going to be very, um, it's practically insoluble. Um, so actually that forms a precipitate. Uh, magnesium sulfate on the other hand, MgSO4, that's going to form a nice solution. And the question will guide you around what they want then. They're not just going to specifically ask you to explain a trend but they will give you various uh, they will lead you into various sort of alleyways um, with, with what they're questioning you the key thing is they can link into here so if we start up here top um, specifically we're looking at magnesium going to calcium to strontium and then to barium this tends to be one that they love talking about so this idea of least soluble up here and the barium sulfate that we produce here, they love to talk about this one as well. So the magnesium hydroxide, they, they like questions like, well, what could you use magnesium hydroxide for? What can you do with this? Blah, 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 blah. And actually, um, it's it's one of those quite nice ones in that you can use magnesium um, hydroxide as things like, different colour for this, make it stand out, um, oh, antacids. And what I mean by that is really indigestion tablets that's a key reason. You wouldn't normally want to be taking a hydroxide orally, uh, you wouldn't want to s drink sodium hydroxide for example, because the magnesium hydroxide is a solid there's uh, not really a risk there, okay, and that's because it's a solid, it's insoluble therefore it's not going to cause that damage, it doesn't act like a normal alkali, that's a very key point. Um, the other way they like to um, look at these various parts is, is as I said, is, is with this barium sulfate. And I'll come on to a second a bit more about this and there's a test that you can look at. Um, but barium sulfate, while we're talking about sort of uses for things, barium sulfate is uh, used as what's called a barium meal. And a barium meal is something that's given in hospitals when someone is going to have an x-ray, or particularly an x-ray of their, um, their uh, GI tract, so the intestine and all, and all that area. And the reason is that um, is that the barium meal, the the barium sulfate, uh, it absorbs the X-rays. It's brilliant. So um, it's 
it actually finds that it all so it sits in your indigestion um, indigestion it sits in your digestive tract and what it does is it'll absorb the um absorb the x-rays and so it allows for doctors to basically see kind of if there are any problems um with that in you know intestine or the stomach or all the rest because you can see very clearly it shows up uh, actually I'll show, here's a picture this is what it kind of looks like on a um on a on an x-ray and so you can see here actually what's happened is the person has swallowed the um, the barium meal and you can see what's happening is it shows up very clearly white hair now I'm not a doctor so I don't know if this person has any problems with them or not uh, obviously hopefully not uh, but you can certainly see um, the barium the sulfate showing up now there's another reason for using the barium sulfate it absorbs these um, these x-rays brilliantly we're well, not another reason for using it but another quirk of, of question they'd like to ask and that's that barium toxic barium barium toxic barium compounds or are basically toxic uh, and the thing they love to ask is well if barium's toxic how come something like barium meal can be used um, can be swallowed can be taken orally the reason is that it's not soluble it's not soluble so therefore the barium doesn't actually get into the body it's uh, taken in through the mouth it works way out and it goes out here and we don't have to worry about it anymore so it comes in it goes out there's no toxic nature to the body and that's because it is insoluble so actually least soluble yeah it's actually insoluble okay so it would be a solid does not dissolve and therefore prov provides no um, risk when taking it um, as, a, as, a, as a suspension as this barium meal um, so that's absolutely fine um, the uh, other uses of things that you might come across uh, calcium hydroxide is particularly used um, it has another name it's uh, called slate lime so I'll put this I'll choose a slightly different color run out of colors here so CaOH2 slaked lime and this is used on fields really it's used as neutralizing um, at neutralizing acidic soil um, and it's a fairly inexpensive um, way of, of reducing the acidity and allowing crops um, to grow basically which is obviously quite important for farmers and all the rest of it uh, and that's really uses done so specifically the ones that have come up in the past on papers magnesium hydroxide calcium hydroxide may have done but barium sulfate certainly does as this barium meal also tying into the barium sulfate and coming back to that one now is um, we can use uh, barium or specifically barium chloride to test for sulfates so SO42 minus test uh, and what we can do is if we have something that contains SO42 minus uh, we find that when we add uh, barium chloride to it uh, we will form a the barium sulfate which as I said up here is insoluble so the test is add HCl again to remove any unwanted ions and barium chloride positive result white precipitate of barium sulfate um, and that's, that's that's your your nice positive result there and that can be used in a variety of ways again as with the some of the the group 7 stuff they could say well why would you not use sulfuric acid to acidify well sulfuric acid contains SO4 and therefore you would get a false positive result um, the reaction the equation for what's occurring here whether you need to know this or not I'm not sure but I think it's certainly worth showing you um, what you would get so let's say we have um, barium chloride uh, we've acidified it and all the rest and we add that to I said it well let's add it to sulfuric acid um, and we'll see what we get so the barium uh, chloride added to the sulfuric acid we're going to produce the barium sulfate and of course then once we produce the barium sulfate we're also going to produce hydrogen chloride obviously we've got to balance that up a bit uh, let's have a look what we've got two here um, and I think that may be okay SO4 balance BA, BA, CO2 yep that's all fine um, you could also look at that in terms of the excuse me in terms of the um, the ions involved so actually what's taking part here it's the BA2 plus uh, and the SO4 2 minus to form the SO oh dear let's rub that out and start again so the BA2 plus and the SO4 2 minus to produce the BASO4 in particular and that's actually that done as a topic so it's a quite a small one it's actually relatively small amounts of stuff you need to know bit of reaction with water 
a um, bit about the solubilities changing down the group, um, linking into uses of the various um, group two compounds, and then finally the fact that we can use the barium chloride and this fact that the we get a, a, an insoluble barium sulfate, we can use that as a test for sulfate ions. I uh, hope that's been of some help. Uh, as always, comments, um, please, if you don't understand anything, or you have any questions or any suggestions. Um, and there you go, it's group two.